Hello everybody, this is Dave the Rave Roving the Rock here and today as you can see I'm at the very front of the ferry this is MV Caledonian Isles on its way towards Ardrossan the sea looks magnificent doesn't it? look at the way the sun's shining off the, the sea there it's a lovely day, it's quite windy, a little bit windy so the ferry's just a little bit rocky but not bad um, that looks great doesn't it? pan back round here as well there we go isn't that great? so I'm on the 8.20 from Brodick to Ardrossan let's put the camera down here um, the 8.20 from Brodick arriving in Ardrossan at 9.15 we're nearly there um, hopefully you can hear me okay um, and I'm going to go and see my little sister Morag who lives in a barge boat um, and normally her barge boat is situated in bowling but at the moment it's at Kirk and Tillich. I'm going to go and ask her why she's moved it I know it's spent a bit of time in Edinburgh as well recently so we'll find out how she's doing especially since she was made redundant and, um, and then cycled the length of Britain from, from Land's End to John O'Groats and that was a couple of months ago now, so we'll see how she's settling into her new life of semi-retirement. Um, I'm also going to do some shopping. Uh, I can't do any Aldi's in, in uh, Asda because that is closed for refurbishment. So I'm going to go to Asda, maybe Lidl as well, um, and Stevenson. Um, this is a rare occurrence for me to go to the mainland. I'm quite happy in the island and I, I work quite hard, so I'm just busy and I get on with my life usually. Um, but uh, it fills me with a little bit of trepidation in a way because it's unusual I maybe only go away two or three times a year something like that and so the kind of things that, that are strange to me driving in the mainland for example I'm a, I'm a confident driver on the island but I don't really know the rules of the roads so well and the unfamiliar roads like Kirk and Tillich you know I don't think I've ever been there before so you've got to watch out and, and concentrate so the driving does make me just a little bit nervous also I've got an old car just in case something goes wrong with it um, there are other things as well something that occurred to me when I was uh, just getting on the ferry there are emission zones in Glasgow now I remember hearing about them and I remember reading that cars 2012 onwards can be affected by that mine's 2012 so is it affected? I don't know and lastly the ferry is on alert um, for the way back, the last boat is on alert because of lights I think it was, lighting problems at Ardrossan so there's always that chance of not getting back which you take that chance it's weather dependent, it's ferry dependent, it's just a fact but it is on alert today so it's a real it's a real possibility um, I chose today which is uh, Thursday because this is the last week that we've got MV Alfred and on Thursday we have more sailings than Tuesday and Wednesday Plus it did have cancellations last couple of days as well, um, so this was like the best weather. So that's why I'm going today, we'll see how my sister's doing when we get there. Okay. Okay, here I am on the mezzanine deck. Um, I'm just about to depart the vessel. They're just emptying out the vehicles that are below, on the deck below. Um, and at some point in the near future, they'll come to this deck so they'll be emptying the vehicles from below this deck this side of the boat and then they'll lower down the front of this deck and start emptying the other side of the boat while they're doing that um, so that's what's happening just now vehicles are going or driving on from right below where I am um, and then in a minute the cars in front of me will start to go down downwards and um, we'll just have a look I think I'm on the ramp um, in the middle of this uh, deck, it's a flat flat deck, it doesn't move, it's fixed um, but um, when you get towards the front of this, that's the, the ramp that goes down and it goes down quite steeply and it always worries me a little bit because I've been on this ramp before when the car behind me didn't put its handbrake on properly or didn't have it in gear and then they bash into the back of you um, so uh, I always sit here with it in gear, I'll just check it now, it's on handbrake, in gear and I'll put my foot in the foot brake as well uh, just to make sure, but you never know what anybody else is going to do um, so that's the only thing about this um, 
we'll just have to see how we get on once it goes down. Usually it's alright though. Only once that's happened, and to be fair, it moved at such a slow speed that it didn't do any damage. Um, I'll open my window a bit. Yeah, I've opened my car window so you can hear hear the noise of the of the machinery lowering the deck. So there's no car behind me. Turns out I'm the last car on this ramp anyway. So nobody's going to hit me, and I've got my foot on the brake. I've I've told you I've done everything right, so I won't be hitting anybody else. There we go, we're down and safe. Right, made it. That's the other side of the boat getting off, just like I said. There'll be nothing left under this, so you wouldn't be able to put the ramp down, so that's how they start with this side. If you've got a small car, you usually end up on a deck. In fact, there are less and less small cars these days. They're getting bigger and bigger. And the electric cars can't go up on the deck anyway because they're too heavy. You know, I'll shut my window so you can hear me. There we go, back in a bit of sounds. Electric cars are too heavy. Um, ironically, the greenest cars, the eco cars, um, weigh twice as much as the cars that aren't eco and uh, you're moving twice as much tonnage about, um, they're about two tons instead of maybe just under one ton for a for a standard car. Um, so they, they're too heavy to go up here, so you've got to go for conventional engine, you know, diesel and petrol engine, the smaller cars. I've got a Vauxhall Corsa, so I'll always end up in the deck, um, especially because there are fewer and fewer cars to choose from. And that's just like a draw. And come in, start my engine. There we go, and I'm off. I'm going to run everybody down. <laughs> Safe and sound, no problem. And off on my journey. So the only thing I have to do really is concentrate on two things. Not crashing, because <laughs> I don't know the roads, and not not getting back because there'll be problems if there's a problem with the ferry. So I've got to get back sharpish. I usually end up much later than I plan. Um, so that's what you got to do. you got to try and be quick and efficient. Um, but before that happens, I've just got to get to Kirkintilloch, wherever that is, and I'll have to set my little GPS thing. So I think what I'll do, I'll get out of our drossen and then I'll just pull up and set my set my coordinates on that. I've got to wait a wee minute here as it turns out anyway because that's the train lights um, on. Which means the train's just going past. In fact I think I can see it. Yep, it's just going past now. There's the train. Just open my window again. You can hear the lights. Uh, right, so uh, here we are, Dave the Rave, roving the rock, roving the rock and the rest of the world today, which is the mainland. Mainland Kirkintilloch. Kirkintilloch, <laughs> which is even the place that I didn't even know where it was, apart from I looked where on Google Maps, and that's when I found out. You have to drive through Glasgow, and then it's on about another 10 miles or something. From yeah, there. a bit north of Glasgow. A bit north of Glasgow. So that's where I am today, uh, here to see Boat Dweller. Uh, Morag Black, my wee sister, and um, but the thing is, she's out of position in her boat today because she's in Kirkintilloch. Normally, uh, her home, which is this uh, fat boy 
Uh, fat boy barge boat. A uh, uh, canal boat. Canal yep. boat, which is ten foot wide instead of the usual seven foot wide. Correct. And eighty foot long. Sixty foot long. Oh, sorry, six. I got that wrong. Yep. Okay, <laughs> that's from memory. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, six foot long, ten foot wide. Amazing, which I love, um, and so do you. Even after a, a number of years staying in it, um, it's normally in bowling. Yeah. But it's not in bowling just now. It has been in Edinburgh as well for a while, hasn't it? Yep, I went through to Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Festival. Is that where you went through? Yeah, yeah. So I just you caught the last week of it. Okay, so let's find out the goings of your home, the going to and from of your home. So you're normally in bowling, yep. and then they had the Edinburgh Festival. So bowling is the very start of the Forth and Clyde Canal. Correct. And you have to go through the. Falkirk wheel. Falkirk wheel. Yeah. And that eliminates all the rest of the locks and stuff that you would have. Well, no, they replaced them. Yeah. So the the, the joining of the two canals, the Fourth and Clyde Canal and the Union Canal, where there were a series of locks. I think it's nine. Yeah. And they replaced those locks. Well, they were no longer anyway. So the Falkirk wheel got installed to do that transit between the two canals. Yeah, and it's an amazing piece of engineering. And I remember reading about it. It takes the power of a couple of light bulbs to turn. 100 tonnes of water around because it's balanced perfectly mm -hmm. so it just spins you could almost it's the just push it seven kettles i think it is it's something like that yeah, seven kettles I mean, it's nothing you, yeah, know, it's when nothing. you see it's like a swimming pool of 100 water. tons yeah each of the gondolas have it's like a swimming pool with a boat sitting in it yeah or two boats depending on the size so you actually see what happens how they you know that that transfer of of uh, mass yeah which you know seven boils of a kettle um it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Amazing. And you're getting lifted, what was it, 100 feet or something? Yeah, probably about that. Uh, um, mm. Amazing. The entire boat in this, and uh, like in a merry go round, mm -hmm. and then getting dumped on this, um, what do you call that, where, you, um, where you're up in the high on the. Um, so, well, we see when you come, come from Edinburgh yeah. into the Falkirk Wheels, you're coming in high. Yeah. You oh, feel yeah. like you're going into like an infinity pool. I don't know if that's yes. what you were looking for there. I've seen that. Yeah, so it's like you're coming in, all you've got is the end of the gondola down low. So you're coming in the boat and you're like, woo, yeah. make sure it's all And there's nothing either side as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, no, there's, there's really fence. Not really, stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But there is actually no fence in front. Yeah. It's, but I mean, you know, you can't. Oh, I see. Yeah. There's no end to this. <laughs> it's like, it's no, there's an like, end, right? There's yeah. obviously an end for your boat with hit. Yeah. But when you're standing on the boat, you're up, up you beyond, above the water that. height, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So you're coming in. That's the best way when you come from Falkirk going down into the Fourth and Clyde Canal. Um, uh, you come in high. That is the best way to yeah. see the Falkirk wheel. Yeah. Rather than coming in low and going up. It's going quite up, slow. Yeah. It's like the slowest ever Ferris wheel you'll ever right, go okay. in your life. I mean, it's nice views when you get to the top. but yeah. And it's interesting watching the whole cogs and all these things turning. But it, the coming in high going down is the really impressive one. And can you see the kelpies from there? Aren't they quite uh, you close to that? You can actually because I only came through two days ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, we were like, can we see the kelpies? Yes, we can. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can. They're about three miles away, something like that. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you went over the beyond, well, you're out with the wheel, mm. and went to Edinburgh for the festival. Yep. And how did that go? Very good. So uh, when you go through the Forth and Clyde Canal, uh, I've always got to have a crew because you're going through locks and you can't go through yeah. that on your own. Um, and actually, uh, it's a wonderful thing. People like coming in boats, so it tends to be. You know, I, I, I keep a track of who's been where when, uh, and you know, I had quite a few pe new people on this year that hadn't been in the boat before moving. They've been come to visit me as my friend, but you know, you know like, that kind of thing. So that was really nice. Some people just absolutely get blown away by it. They just, you know, yeah. it's just so so lovely to. It really adds to my journey right. when somebody just falls in love with it. You know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so that's been really lovely. But so from bowling. It has been problematic. The, the canal is, is now, well, it's only been open for 20 years, but it, well, since it reopened. Yeah. But some of the equipment is the original equipment in the canal, oh. um, and it's old. Um, some of the newer stuff doesn't work very well. Oh. Um, and, you know, you get all these problems. So four times now this year, I've had a journey book to passage book to go. Through, it's always through locks. You've got a book, booked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's been cancelled at the last minute, the day before. Now I've got wow. crew booked. Um, I was supposed to be coming out of the water to work in oh. my, my boat in June, um, so I booked my my boat to come through the canal in April before the cycle. Then in May when I came back from the cycle, and again in June. Right. And each time it was cancelled. Eventually, the the third time they were so embarrassed they actually came to my work and told me, "I'm so sorry, but 
we have to cancel you. Wow. Know? And it meant my boat didn't get water, so I've now got a rusting hull under the oh, water, unfortunately. Right. Maybe, whatever. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I'm booked yeah. in to go next year. Uh, so uh, so that's that's kind of the downside, uh, and you've got to be kind of philosophical yeah, about it. That's why I'm sitting in Kirkintilloch. I'm supposed to be in bowling now, but um, the Scottish canals haven't been cutting the weeds, and uh, therefore I can't get through. So your home is bowling, mm -hmm. that's where your the neighbours are, that's where your street is basically because yeah. you've got this whole line of boats like yours yeah. side by side. That's where I pay for my mooring, yeah. That's where you pay for your mm -hmm. mooring, and you're still paying for that mooring? Yeah. And you can't get to your mooring? No. Because it's not been maintained properly? Correct. I didn't know this, so this is all yeah. interesting, we haven't it's talked about this. It's frustrating. So this used to and be... It's also, uh, Scottish Canal's communication skills are absolutely horrendous, so your phone, can I go? I will get back to you. Wow. Your phone. I haven't heard from you. Oh, we'll get back to you. And now, even this one, so yeah. I was supposed to be going, um, it was the last weekend, I was supposed to be going, um, coming from, uh, through the Falkirk Wheelness on the Saturday into Glasgow, and then from Glasgow down to Bowling on Sunday. Mm. That was the idea. Um, and uh, they came back and said, the weeds are too bad, you can't get through. Um, you, you know, that's it. Kind of of so you, you just, it's just, and it, as frustrating as it is, when I say they came back, they came back about, seven days later so i'd already crew booked they'd taken time off work yeah yeah it was a monday i ended up having to like that was they said you can't do saturday sunday you can only do saturday sunday monday so i agreed that but monday's difficult because most of my friends are still working no. so two people took time off work to come and do it with me on monday and then they cancelled cancel it. it and you just it's very it never occurred to me that i, I seen it, i saw it as kind of a freedom thing and you can move your home mm. but it's really difficult to do mm. here it's really difficult to do if you were in England, for example, where they've got a much bigger canal network, the, would yeah, it the, be the easier? The lock gates work differently. So this, this, now, I, I haven't actually moved a boat in England, so I don't know how it works, right? But there's something about some kind of water release goes around the side of the locks. So if you mess up opening the locks, you don't empty the whole canal. Oh, right. Whereas here in Scotland, there's this huge fear. And we have lots of water, so obviously there is. it must be, there must be some kind of I, I, I think kind of bad because I don't actually know why, right? But the, the Scottish canals will not let you operate the lock gates yourself. Yeah, case because you can it. effectively empty the canal. Um, so uh, you know, you ha you're completely dependent upon them. I mean, it's nice in a way because all you have to do is you work the ropes and then they do the gates. Yeah. Um, so it's quite easy. But restrictive because but they restrictive, have to do yeah. it. But that's where, okay, so when I come through, I need crew until I get through the Falkirk wheel. Well, so it's 17 locks from Bowling to Maryhill, and that's you at the top of the canal. Wow. Then from Maryhill to the Falkirk Wheel, you start going uh, down the way. All right. <laughs> so it's four locks down. Ah. And then the Falkirk Wheel, uh, you've got a lock to go in the wheel, and then two locks to then get on the Union Canal. But once I'm on the Union Canal, there, there are no, no locks, locks and there are no bridges that have to open up. I've heard that. 30 something miles of freedom. Yes. So my, I, I dropped my crew um, off at, uh, there's a kind of tunnel. Um, it's a really, really cool tunnel. It's all just rocks. It's all just blasted away. So you're going through this long tunnel. It's probably yeah. about 400 yards long, right. and it's just all drippy rocks. Right. Um, anyway, so I drop my crew just before that tunnel. because they can get to the train at Falkirk High Station. Right. So I'm going through, drop them, and then I've got I think it's about 35 miles, maybe a 32 something like that, uh, where I can just potter about, stop here, stop there, and just take it easy and uh, visit people. I've got to know people. Okay. Around, you know. Um, and so that on my own, good. completely on my own. So I spent that whole time uh, moving all on my own. Yeah, that would be wonderful. It's lovely. It's really nice. I, I feel proud of myself that I can actually operate the boat. Um, you know, sometimes you're having to stop the boat in the middle of the canal and climb the roof and sort your ropes so when you step yeah. off, you because know, it's a 60 foot boat, yeah. the only way you can control that boat when you're coming into a pontoon is to have a, a midline mm. that, that you bring back to the, where you are controlling you know, the tiller. Um, and then you step off with that midline because if you've got a line at the back, you've only got control of the back, and the, the front of the boat could do right. anything. Okay. You've got the front line, then the back of the boat could be doing anything. So you've got to have something in the middle, in the middle. and then you can pull it in, pull it back, pull it forward, whatever. Right. Um, and there is a, such a satisfaction of pulling the boat in to a pontoon or whatever, and you just step off, tie up, done, done, done it myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lovely. So that's it. So that would all be great if. The canals were maintained properly, basically, that's what it comes down Correct. to. But there's a problem it's just every now. Every boat, boater's uh, bugbear is so just how it, it is. So it needs to be sorted out, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's money problems, obviously. So. 
Um, so has anything changed in the boat since we last saw it? You've painted the outside. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, that's all really. Um, I so I had I only painted the outside about three or four years ago, but I didn't finish the job. It was stupid. Okay. There was a, a a section of white going around the kind of a, like kind of outline around the boat, and uh, I didn't like it. So I oh. thought, right, I'll, I'll do the main red, and then I'll do that white section at another time. Right. And then for the last three or four years, it just rusted. <laughs> so right. I then oh. had to had sand it all back yeah. uh, and vit virtually pretty much everything so I ended up just doing redoing the whole sides again uh, and it's still mainly red but uh, I'm now kind of going reggae uh, you know, <laughs> colours with yellow and uh, green and yeah. a bit of black coming it looks well. nice oh, well, I've seen it so we'll have a look at that in a wee minute right okay. Okay. Um, in fact I should I could I could just turn the camera around just to the kitchen couldn't I yeah of course since we're here just to show anybody what this boat's like if you don't remember so that's the stairs you come down from the outside, mm -hmm. that's where the steering steering bit is, like yep, the yep, back yep. of the boat. Yeah, and the engine's out there as well. The engine's out this bit here. We've got the wee steps there. Um, and that's like a cover there, but it, that's just like a canvas canvas yeah, so cover that comes away. Depending on the weather, if, if, if it's raining I'll keep it on, if it's not raining I'll take it down. Yeah. And, and then the seat. rest of it looks like, well that's this is the kitchen diner and lounge. You can see the timber on the ceiling. It looks amazing. I love it. I know more at one point was talking about maybe thinking about painting it. I've, I vehemently, that's <laughs> vehemently, um, I stopped her from doing that, or at least tried to stop her, because I think the wood looks amazing. That's what I think. I think it's the, the best thing about it, actually. And I used to live in a house in Spring Bank in Brodick, and all the, the doors and everything, all the timber was original and unpainted. I think it's painted now. But that was something Whoa, I really liked because it had never been hard. painted since the house had been, you know, built. And, you. you know, um, and they got a real fire, a real uh, stove there as well. Um, so, put the camera back. Um, and uh, so, what you stopped work. You made redundant a few months ago, and within about three days, you found yourself down at Land's End and cycled the length of the country yeah. on a bicycle. Uh, with your stuff, um, oh, it's gonna see it's gonna, yeah, it's fine. Uh, with your stuff on the bike mm -hmm. and your tent and everything like that, yeah. And then you finished that. It took about a month to do. Yeah. Was it twelve hundred miles? Yep. And um, and now you've got your new life because you're not um, teaching students and stuff and doing coursework and things anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, how's that new life going? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so you're not getting bored and you're still enjoying, yet, enjoying having less to do yeah uh, yeah definitely um, I have been quite busy um, so I came back from the cycle and then actually the boat was supposed to come out of the water you then. had a lot so, of stuff for the boat there yeah yeah so well the boat was supposed to come out of the water for two weeks and I was supposed to re black it I couldn't do that so that actually gave me a couple of weeks like just chilling out a wee bit to be honest what I did then was I got all my winter wood cut um, so yeah. I got all my winter wood cut Maybe saying that. that's all done so, Enough uh, wood for your stove for the whole winter, for the, for the fire for winter. Yeah, so that's done. And then um, I, I, I've really just had a, um, a wonderful time. So I've been away kind of like four holidays. Um, I went to Spain. I flew into Santander and I did part of the Camino de Nord way, right. a hundred mile walk um, with my friend. Um, it was just wonderful. It was in the middle of the Spanish heat wave, but because we were at the coast. It was 10 degrees cooler than everybody else, so it was so just lovely, low 20s, fine, perfect. Did that, and then I went straight from there, so because I, I have been a lecturer and I used to have six weeks holiday, I'm very used to cramming as much as I can into yeah. that time. Sometimes you can have too many good things and it ends up being a bit harassing because you're just it's bouncing. Too busy. So uh, I, I did it again this summer, but I did it slightly differently where um, I thought, right, what I'm going to actually do is I'm not going to come home. So I'm going to have two holidays joined together and not come home in the middle and then I'll have a wee break and then I'll no, have two right. holidays joined together and not come home in the middle of the manga. So Spanish holiday and then a uh, walking holiday. Flew from there um, to Krakow and then I got a train. Is it Krakow or Krakow? Krakow, I think it's you Krakow. say the V is a, a, okay. a O. Okay. I think that's right. Good, I don't know. Um, so into Krakow and then I, I never got, even got off Aaron. A couple of trains. Uh, this is like back on the mainland here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is high excitement. I, can't tell. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. 
<laughs> dan ben ik crack of crack. Hey, weet je nog? Ja, die hangen bien. En ze ben ik crack. Ja, nou, crack. Ja, en dan ik ga een paar jeans naar Ukraine. Ukraine. So we were there for, uh, so my partner and I, he was there already um, and he, uh, I, I went out and joined him, so I was there for about 10 days and... Uh, what were you doing in Ukraine? Uh, so we work, both worked for an organisation called Frontline Kitchens mm -hmm. and uh, so we went to Lviv, which is way over in the west of Ukraine, mm -hmm. but um, we Frontline Kitchens uh, make food for the frontline troops. Right. That's that's what happens. So and it's a really interesting organisation. It's you know, I, because I'm not working, I can afford to do some volunteering, and I have looked at some things, and some things you're like, mm, that's that's actually just made up. That's nonsense. Like you pay to volunteer and help somebody make a mud hut. You're kind of like, mm. but this really felt. You know, I didn't know it was going to be until I got there, but it really did feel like you were doing something useful, which was great. Mm. So it was. It, it's a charity organisation. They have like three parts to it. Mm. One is the, the kitchen that I worked in most of the time, where you're mm. preparing um, vegetables mainly. Um, one of them is a dehydrating plant, so almost everything that they do, so let's say potato, the peel of potatoes, that's, that was the bit that I was involved with. Then there's a machine, a bit like with your Play Doh machine when you're a kid. Mm. Potato goes in, it comes out as like wee spaghetti bits, right. and that gets put on trays into um, an oven. So the oven's about this height, there might be about 20, 25 trays in the oven, and it just layer after layer after layer of this potato, um, and it gets very slowly cooked for hours, and it basically gets dehydrated. So you can no, dehydrate right. the potato. That's okay. how you do it. And they do it the same with beetroot and all, all sorts of other stuff. And that's how so, they get it. Yeah, so Convenient. because. Yeah, so the, the, this ki the, the they can't control, they don't, no control over what, who's volunteering or not. Mm. They just, if you turn up, you, you volunteer. Um, so the, you know, one day there might be 10 volunteers, the next day yeah. there might be 25. Right. They have no control over what gets donated to them mm. because you know, local farmers and so on donate the food. Right. Be, right? So they might get um, 400 cabbages one day, um, you know, 1,000 garlic bulbs the next day. You know, so you know, you know, yeah, of and of course, you is. can't do them all no. but, you know, what, continuously. So you know, they have to. Sometimes they need garlic. They need gar you know, garlic goes in a lot of the food because just to try and give it flavour. Yeah. Anyway, so I know you put garlic in your smoothies. <laughs> you, you'll get that. I do believe in garlic. Yes, I think garlic. Garlic. <laughs> you know, and and all the herbs and spices and things. Yeah. Yes, I was. I, I, they're very An good. An advocate for, me. for that. I am. I believe in them. The more, the merrier. Yeah. So yeah, I put them in smoothies and soup. Yeah. Well, you would approve actually. So, so th that was the kind of kitchen part, right? That was one part. The second part, which I went to, was the packaging plant. Yeah. Um, and, and you make up, um, you know, the stuff, and it's all very much done by hand. So it's like you you weigh out two hundred grams of porridge or whatever it is, right? Yeah. So th it, this really impressed me actually. So I, it was porridge day the day I was there, um, and so you get a bag porridge day. Yeah, we make up bags of porridge. Right. In um, Ukraine, and there were seventeen. 17 ingredients went into this right like obviously porridge and milk powder but then um like cinnamon like m multiple right. th things like that but then cherry dried cherries dried orange dried sultanas oh. you know da -da -da -da. no no just sultanas obviously super healthy um, then oh amazing I mean, honestly you're thinking i've never had porridge with this many wonderful things in it oh f sugar and fruity and things and Can giving it, it flavor sugar was one of them yeah absolutely right so they get the bag and the idea is that all of these bags it's a bit suppose like a wonderful pot noodle you get this bag and the guys at the front will only have hot water so mm. they add the hot water they've into got a meal and they've got a meal exactly and a nutritious meal like that yeah yeah so i saw the the brain product so that was really good right um because most of the time it was just peeling garlic and you know that kind of thing in fact yeah. little did i know right so i spent days dealing with the garlic as did many people and my hands were kind of burning no right and then about a week later honestly all the skin was peeling down my fingers. You get this oh, thing called garlic burn. Oh yeah, because um, it's so kind of yeah, yeah hot. Acidity or something. Acidity, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it is acid or something like that. Wow. Anyway, so uh, so uh, did that, um, and then uh, the, the last part of it is the so there's the kind of preparing it, the um, dry, drying it out, yep. and then the packaging it kind of thing. Okay, that, that's right. I didn't go to the drying out plant, but they did have some drying out mm. ovens in the kitchen I was in, so you kind of got the idea. Anyway, so so that that's that's what they do, um, and the the really great thing for me, I have to say, is this uh, Finnish medic student came to the kitchens, and he'd been working behind the front line as a medic, um, and then he'd come and worked volunteered at the kitchen in his breaks between going out to the front line. I could own him, right. and he said the stuff that that you know, Ukrainian soldiers have been given, as was he, the same same stuff, is just flavourless oh. gruel. 
it's got everything in it you need to be strong and right. healthy, but it's nobody wants to eat it because yeah. it's just disgusting. He said, if you were to get something like this huh. as a soldier, it would just be amazing. It would yeah. be such a treat to right. get that. So that, you just suddenly... It encourages realize, you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, there was the camaraderie of working with people and yeah. the, yes, we've done the 400 cabbages, you know, that yeah. kind of thing, right? That yeah. kind of, yeah, we've all worked together as a wee team and done it. Um, and also the fact that... Is that you getting upset about that there? No, no. No, no, no. But also the fact <laughs> that... Um, you actually realised that you were making a difference to somebody. You know uh, that was you. Know, but I don't have any great skills. Right? Uh, I'm not a, you know any chef or whatever. You know, yeah, I can peel a potato, but you know, um, but actually to be able to contribute and make a difference. But you know, when you know, from my point of view, and some uh, people have questioned me about this, but you know, Ukraine was invaded, and I just find it incredibly shocking that uh, that, that happened and it's been allowed to happen, um, and that's the boat heating up. That's is it? Oh yeah, the, the panels the expanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, uh, so for me, uh, that kind of what can you do? Oh, I don't think I can do anything. I actually felt like I could do something. Yeah, yeah. That, that something that actually maybe did help, which yeah. was nice, you know. And something I have to admit, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, just just to kind of finish that story off, right? Lviv itself, it was quite interesting because it um, was really busy. Mm. And the reason it's really busy is because it's so far over to the west. No Ukrainian man has been able to leave the country. Mm. Um, since the war started. Right? You're not allowed to leave, obviously, because they may be called up. So uh, people are holidaying within Ukraine. Mm. And what they're doing, of course, is going away from the fighting to the West. So Lviv is just jumping. Yeah. I mean, you know, the restaurants are full. Yeah. It feels like people are on holiday. You walk around and um, like the, the um, churches are all boarded up, all the windows and everything. So you see things like that. You don't see bombing. There's nothing like no. that in the West, right? I mean, obviously they get hit with occasional drone hits and that kind of thing. But, right. uh, but you know, the, 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 you don't walk around going, you know, my goodness, look at this war not really worried about that. No, no. No. Um, but you do see the churches are boarded up. The um, uh, the statues have all got like scaffolding over them and netting to protect them. Oh, right. um, the schools are all sandbagged. Right. Um, and then the saddest thing um, is like, so we had a flat. When I and I've now been staying in a hostel, but when I came, we stayed in an Airbnb, very cheap. So it turned out it was so cheap because it was a loft, it's beautiful. And you don't want a loft, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we survived That's a that. Bad place anyway, to be. It was a stunning place. You want a basement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, Jeez. so we had this lovely loft apartment yes. looking over the main Alter, square. Alter yourself. <laughs> main square of Lviv. Uh, but it looked onto so every couple of days. Um, these new posters would come out of the boys that have died right. in Lviv that are their funeral the next day. Um, and it's a picture of somebody in their 20s, maybe somebody in their 30s. Mm. You know, a couple of you know, not, not a couple of people. Um, and you know, there's a, a wee story about them. Mm. Uh, okay, so, and then there is the graveyard where um, the, you know, the, all the new um, graves for the soldiers are not in the graveyard. Most of them are not because there's just too many. Uh, so there's a section, a field I suppose probably, that's been dug um, for all these soldiers just from Lviv that have died and there are hundreds and hundreds of graves. It's going back, back, back. It's beautiful, you know, beautifully tended, flags and, and flowers and actually very busy obviously because these people are not long dead. There are lots of people visiting and everything. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, so the it shows you side the, of it, you know. Yeah, it shows you the reality of it, mm -hmm. if it brings it home. Yeah. If you, if you weren't so aware of it, because it's more like a kind of like almost like a holiday destination kind of thing, yeah. way. but it's real, even in that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I uh, so you left um, you left there, and then where did you go after that? Um, after Ukraine, I um, came back for a couple of days, uh, four, uh, and then I went for another holiday uh, to France. Yes, <laughs> that's to France. Uh, staying with friends in their house, and then uh, another uh, kind of flew out of Bristol and then I joined that up with visiting our wee sister, Nikki, in Herefordshire and then also going for a music festival in Exeter for, for, for four days. Yeah, so um, that's, a, so holiday, holiday, holiday and, and then, then I came back came for back. a couple of days and then I took the boat away. Took the um, boat away yeah. and so now you're back and now you're almost back to reality or normality except for you're not back home because you haven't managed to get back home because there's too many beads. Correct, so I'm waiting in Kirkintilla for the beads to be cut. Yes, that's the rain on, isn't yeah. it? On the canvas. <laughs> of course, that sounds loud. It's the canvas. But all the noise is coming from yeah. the canvas, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's you not get coming. some of the. Yeah, it's get a little bit. 
bit like a caravan roof or something. Yeah. Do you want me to shut the door so it's less noisy? Oh no, I don't mind. I sure. quite like it. It's nice. Yeah. Um, okay, so in a way this is now going to be the start of your... Yeah, normality. Because you haven't got any more holidays coming well, up? Well, I have. I have? Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in January... I'm January? Going, I'm spending January in Spain. Right. Uh, I'm trying to learn to speak Spanish. And uh, uh, a friend is going to be there for a couple of months, so I'm going to join him uh, in January. And then in February, I'm going to go back to you in February. Oh, yeah. All oh, right, do the same thing again? Yeah. Out for a month or so. A month? Yeah. Wow, okay. Okay, so you've got a wee bit of a few months of the winter. Yeah. October, November, December. So that's going to be more interesting, isn't it? Just to see what happens if you ditch the car or not. But I've got if to you save carry on money. cycle. <laughs> you could do without the car, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe, although cycling. Well, do you know what we're going to do, right? If, 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 so, the car's due for an MOT next week and it's 16 years old. So 16, right. Yeah, so, it's obviously, you know, it's not worth spending any money on it at all. But we set a budget, and if it costs more than that, which it probably will, we're going to put that money into a bank account. Right. Um, that's my partner and I, because we share a car just now. And, um, we share a car but we live 10 miles apart yeah. <laughs> so you know yeah, yeah, one you of you another one has the car kind of thing yeah. and actually you just get out of the habit of using the car so we tend to use a car because we're going somewhere uh, together rather it's than an event that. yeah 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 exactly but anyway um so yeah so we're going to put money in the bank and then we're going to see whether you know we're going to use that that will be kept separate a brand new bank account so that we can use that for taxis or it's going to be more like you know, let's go and see Nikki sister down in Herefordshire so how do you get there that's going to yeah, cost it's going to be trained so we're going to it's an interesting experiment to see whether it costs more oh, or yeah. less but you're going to do it yep 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 that's going to come and the money will be there in the bank anyway if you know what I mean so you know yeah. that kind of thought of all right we're going to get a taxi oh well that's awfully expensive I just won't go but the money's there to do it you know, that's the point is Instead of spending that on yeah. car, that's for us I to did do that, that when I stopped smoking. I took out a membership at the swim pool and stuff like that. You've got to spend the money in another way and and, and recognise that that money's been been saved. You know, yeah. to see it to motivate. Well, it's not, we're not even for saving. It's just to make sure that we know we can yeah. you know, use alternative transport. Here. Yeah. Um, and in fact, that now there are um, people that have their cars sitting in a driveway all day because it work. They can put their car in an app. Um, and right. it's very much weighted by, you know, like, it really works by ratings. Um, but it's got to be a car that's relatively young, yeah. um, 18 or that kind of thing, um, And you can rent a car, you can do city cars, but this other thing is a kind of personal thing. So I can say, right, I'm going to put my car, obviously not my 16 year old car, my 3 year old car, on this. I have insurance um, and um, I can then rent that car right. for 2 hours, 3 hours, whatever, as a kind of key system to get the key. And then you return the car to that. And that's a lot cheaper than hiring a car as yeah. well. So that will be interesting to see uh, if that works. I live rurally, so I'm not totally sure that's going to work for me. Yeah. But it would work in Glasgow. Obviously. And you were saying that would mean that you're cycling if you go to work and on the odd time you go to work. And that would be, what was it, a, a 17? Well, it won't be now because I'm, I don't work in college anymore. So, so you know, I, I started anywhere. doing some ca shifts in a cafe just around the corner from my It's just around the corner. Yeah. Ah, right, so, so that's so that quite far away. No, it's like a one minute walk. <laughs> right, so you really don't... No. So you don't need the car? No. no. Right, okay. Okay, that's alright. Mm. Well, probably I'll probably well end up without it then. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. Okay. Uh, it looks like the rain's off. Yeah. So we'll go out and have a look at outside the yeah, boat. Yeah, come on in. Come, get the camera. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite off, Dave. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Go up the wee windy stairs. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh. Up the wee windy stairs. That's it there. Outside. There we go. Oh, wow, look at that. It's like a rooftop. Yeah, <laughs> a rooftop view. Yeah, you're right. You're All right. these boats. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, this so is this your is boat. South Bank Marina. South Bank Marina. I don't think It's quite enclosed, isn't it, with the new buildings? Lairdland Primary School. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see that. There's primary kids going over there. Yeah. Well, that's a nice place to be in it. Yeah. That isn't that's a lot of boats out here. I'll go to the end of the wee. What do you call this? A walkway or something? Pontoon. Pontoon, right, okay. This is anti-slip. It feels very solid. 
Wow, and then all these boats at the end. Just have a look around the corner here. Camera's probably going to get rain drops on it, but we'll only be out for a second. Nice, huh? Now we're going to get back in. Yeah. We'll have a quick look at your handiwork, and that'll do. <laughs> nice and bright, right? I'll do. <laughs> and we shutters in the window as well. <laughs> Good, good work. And now that I know about the roof, I'm not bonking my head on it this time. <laughs> okay. So, have you got any more plans in the offing? Um. Get this camera lens away. Well, it's not bad. Yeah. Well, Spain and then Ukraine. That's all. Yes, but nothing else for for you. So oh, you've well. got some quiet ones coming up. Okay, well, okay, so the next couple of months, two and a half months. Are you yeah, to, no, I have actually. You're going to learn Spanish? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to continue with that. But uh, yeah, I am. Uh, so um, I am going to get in contact with. I'm, 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 I'm doing various things. I've signed up with a talent agency just have for you? extras. So, oh, not, good. Not buy stuff. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. and, unfortunately, I was away, so I've had quite a lot of things. You know, they, just, they just obviously just do the database and they just send out, are you available? And I've, I haven't been because I've, you know. Uh, anyway, but yeah, oh, I'll, so I'll tell you a quick story just quickly. Uh, okay, There's ahead. a friend of mine, Fiona Rodriguez, who's on uh, Aaron and um, works at Okrani, and um, she was away in the boat the other day. And I said, Wait, away, away, so you know, being nosy. She says, I'm away to a Taggart reunion uh, because I think it was, it was 40 years since Taggart started. Yeah. And she says, I was the first person ever killed in Taggart. Uh, <laughs> I was the first, dead, the first, first person killed. <laughs> The first dead uh, body, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so she's back at she went to the reunion, you know, yeah, she was an extra on the, on the, on the Tiger show, so so yeah, it could be quite quite fun. Yeah, yeah. Especially well, forty years later, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be, yeah, yeah. No, that, uh, all the yeah, all the different people. I'm still alive. That. Kill me again. <laughs> you didn't do it properly. <laughs> so yeah, so that's one. Um, I'd quite like to do some. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't know. I might do a couple of these uh, locally to start off. So there's a thing where you can do house sitting. Um, and I would right. like to do that abroad. So um, I, would, uh, in order to kind of get a wee bit of a reputation, I might just do a few wee bits here. It tends Think to be you house, can get a license for house that slash. No, you don't have to. House so. slash pet sitting kind of thing. Yeah. So I could go and look after somebody's house slash pet for a weekend in Edinburgh. Like yeah. That would and that would that would start getting a reputation. I have heard then, you can get licensed though. There is something okay. that you can get like an official approval. Okay. Because there's a couple of people doing that on Aaron. Uh, you don't have to. But it's a reassurance. It's like a certificate to say uh, that you've okay. passed whatever test to say you're a fit and proper person. Okay. You know, criminal conviction yeah. free or whatever it is. All right. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Not well, a college lecturer. Lecture. The college oh, lecturers lecture. need not apply. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, the, no, so the, I'm, I'm kind of playing with things. So uh, um, also, I, I've, I've always this fancy of being a Christmas postie. So no. that as well. I, I did actually get that last year, but I was still working, so that, that was rubbish. I had to turn it down. Right. Um, and also, um, there's an organisation in Mary Hill who um, volunteering, who do teach English to um, refugees. And I have done a teach English qualification, uh, right. teach English as a foreign language qualification. So, and, and I'd like to do take that abroad. Right. But um, I get distracted with you here. Well, I'm thinking. Like, I'd like to take it uh, um, to go abroad and do it. Yeah. But I, again, it would be sensible to build up a bit of a reputation that I can actually you know, prove I've done some. What about saying that? Yep, that's another. The Yamaha. As you can see by the dust, it's, it's not uh, being it used very much. It's still in good tune though, I've I did try soft it. fingers, so I clearly haven't been playing it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to get a little rough bits yeah. in the end, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's a lot of plans you've got. Well, they're all very vague. Some of them will don't come off and some of them won't, do you know what I mean? They don't need to be exact, do they? Because mm. you've got just all the time with life, in the world, don't yeah, yeah. It sounds great. Mm. And keep up your fitness as well. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was mentioned, was it? Yeah. You've got the bicycle. Oh, well, no, you've got the bike April, in there. April, I'm going to do another cycle. Oh, yeah. uh, but this is going to be Western Isles. Amazing. Yeah. Western Isles, eh? How long are you going to take? A month. Same as when you did the length of Britain? Yeah. A month, eh? Probably won't do the same number of miles, though. I'd like no. to go to lots of islands. I actually need your advice with this. Hmm, okay. Sit down and do a Kalmaki. I'd love to do it. The thing is, I've got injured elbows and I don't know. But anyway, it'd be nice to do it. I asked you last year, you turned me down. I'm not asking you this year. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I can. I don't know. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the problem with jobs, isn't it? Yeah. And injuries. 
Yeah, I wouldn't know about that. No, we wouldn't know with either of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the job thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'll do. That concludes the out, out interview with um, and Moe's Fat Boy Barge Boat. Which is called Donovan. Donovan. So the name is going to go on it. I haven't got the name on just there. Donovan. Yeah. Is that a recent thing you've decided? No, no, no. no always that's, been that's called always called Donovan. That, yeah. So just it's a boy boat. Mm-hmm. Donovan. Mm-hmm. It's quite unusual. Most boats now you'd think yeah. that'd be good for a sailboat, like Catch the Wind. It's not Donovan. That was the song. Mellow Yellow. Melly, oh yeah, Mellow Yellow. Right, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I came across some with the Volkswagen camper the other day and it was green and I filmed it, it's on my Facebook page, it was an old split screen one from the 60s and um, it was called Dylan and he's got another one at home called Dougal, so that's after the Magic Roundabout, okay? Mm-hmm. I happen to have read something about the Magic Roundabout a couple of weeks before mm-hmm. and the person who invented the Magic Roundabout with all the colours left green out because he hated green and right enough the Magic Round Boot's got no green in it, it's got all the colours of the rainbow, apart from green. Whoa. As the actual colour that his, uh, that his uh, camper van was, was green. So he's deliberately chosen this knowing Yeah, I know this. I told him and he, and he just came back to me and said, wow, I didn't know. In a way, you could say, well, that was one that was left out, but also that completes the picture if you want to look at it that way. Nice. But that was, a bit like Donovan, that was Dylan because it was like, hey, laid back, you know, take yeah, it okay, easy. Yeah, okay, okay. And okay. that's kind of the way I, I think about Donovan as well. well I don't know, I don't know where... You know, somebody, why somebody decided to call it Donovan? I mean, the boat's not old. You didn't decide to call it Donovan? No, no, no. no. The boat's not old, it's 13 years old. So How did you find out it was called Donovan? That's, it's always been that since I bought it. How do you know? Because you get a proper certificate. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a car, you have your proper You're ownership buying like 100 grand boat and it's called Donovan. Yeah, exactly. So nobody did that with my Vauxhall Corsa. <laughs> didn't get my name? No, oh. it's just Vauxhall. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, you do have this number. You do. Um, right. Which I, I know, I've never had to officially give it to anybody. Like, a sure doesn't have it, or it gets don't a know. name. A boat gets a name. Yeah, every boat has a name, yeah. I suppose it's a bit like a house, though, isn't it? And that's why you see like Donovan two, Donovan three. You can't have ah, two Donovans. Well, you've got Donovan. Mm. That sounds good. Mm. Thanks. You could sell that name. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got to decide in the styling of the. You know. I'm selling the boat. It's hundred grand, but it's one hundred and fifty because it's called oh, Donovan. Donovan. It's the original. But so I don't know whether to, because I'm kind of like into reggae, uh, uh, you know, Donovan's not really, a, you know, like even like, assuming it's, it is named after Donovan the singer, yeah, yeah. he's not reggae, but he's 60s, so it could be kind of bubbly style or something, but I don't know what, I yeah. need to kind of think about what yeah. I'm going to do there, or do I just go name, and then that's it. Don't do anything too fast. I think you'd look up the songs, it's going to be Donovan, I, I would look up the songs and pick my favourite one, if it was Catch the Wind or whatever the style. it was. Like, uh, the style, like, it's, what is the, the font kind of thing, that's something I'm thinking, like, how do I, how oh do I, yeah. Yeah, that, what, how do I make it look? Yeah, yeah. all right. Do I make it look 60s? Do I make it look reggae? Do I make it look... And that is what we'll do in the next exciting episode of Mo Goes Bad Boy <laughs> Barging! <laughs> With Donovan. <laughs> okay, that'll do. Dave the Rave and Mo over and out. Bye. Well, here I am at the queue for MV Alfred. Uh, this is the 425 from Ardrossan to Brodick on Thursday 21st uh, September. It's a rainy day as you can see. Um, and MV Alfred using the Irish berth. So ordinarily uh, the ferry um, MV Caldo and Isles would use the one right in front of here. We'll better start measuring. Um, you just go straight on here. Uh, but we're using the other berth today, which means I'm going to be turning right at the end of this car park. And I'm just going to be driving on and letting you see what it's like as I drive on it. Um, it looked pretty much full to me. Every row here was full front to back. And that's with us us losing the Alfred on Monday. The last day is Monday. I'm in the small cars queue because I've got a Corsa. So the way they've loaded it, they've just basically started with the biggest things and put them in, in the centre, uh, put the lorry on, that will reversed on, and then put about six or seven vans and motorhomes on, they'll have turned around the deck and reversed back with the lorry, and then went from uh, right to left in this car park with the uh, bigger cars, uh, camper vans and things, starting off first and then coming down to this lane, lane three, which is the small cars, sorry, lane four, 
Lane 3 is on the right there. That's standby, that's unbooked cars. And they came in a long time after me, so that's basically why they were in that queue. They were the last to arrive. Um, but yeah, it looked it looked full to me. These lanes were full front to back, so that's at least 60 plus vehicles, plus 7 or 8 motorhome type things and a lorry. Um, maybe more than that. So it will be full, this boat. That's why they're taking their time loading it. We'll be going down the left hand side. Uh, behind the little poles under the overhang, that's a three metre high bit that goes down you go down the left and all the way around the back and then back out the right and that's how you, you come back off the boat you go around the big circle through the wee bumpy hole bits <laughs> and not running into any yachts Now I've only been in this boat once, I just never go away basically, so... Um, what have I done this summer? I've been on the Alfred once. I'm back in the Cali Isles. Then I went right round the island once in the Waverley. On the round island Waverley cruise, which I also filmed, I put that on YouTube. And now I'm away, I went away in the Caledonian Isles, I was up in the mezzanine deck and then, which I filmed earlier on, and now I'm going on the Alfred now, and that's my day complete. And I aim for this boat, the 425, because the last boat away from Ardrossan is the 6 o'clock Caledonian Isles, but as I mentioned earlier, that's on alert, um, so you're better safe than sorry. Um, and I've done what I was going to do anyway, so that's fine. Um, but anyway, I'm just glad that I made it. I didn't have any problems. I managed to get um, along the motorway okay. I went on the motorway right through Glasgow. The navigation thing um, tried to take me off the motorway in the middle of Glasgow, but I was too happy for that because that would have given me the emissions charge, and plus it was the wrong way. So I just carried on the motorway, and in fact, it took me right almost to the door. Um, of the large boat, so that was great, and back again, it was it was a good journey both ways. Um, so I was quite happy. Um, right in the centre of Glasgow, it went down to two lanes because there were roadworks, and that created a wee bit of a but not it wasn't a stationary, but it was slow traffic. Um, but it was okay. The rest of it was great. It was the the motorway was was kind of half empty. It was it was just comfortable. You could do whatever speed you wanted to really, and uh, and follow the flow of whatever lane you were driving in. So that was nice, and I, I was pleased with that because I don't I don't drive in the rest of the world, as I call the mainland, uh, very often, and so it's nice if it's uneventful. Um, right, off we go. Right, just as I said, so see all the big things in the centre, and then the bigger cars to the side of that. And then I'm one of the smaller ones, so I'm going under this 3 metre maximum headroom bit to the left of the yellow and black poles. Alfred's equivalent of the mezzanine deck. The stationary traffic just now, but these cars will all move forward in a wee second, because it goes from a single lane here to two lanes just a little bit further on and then they spread out and they get parked by people. So this is like the little bottleneck bit here and then there's a lot of space further up. Here's the loader. to go straight forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's me. Handbrake on. In gear. <laughs> Everything secure. 
job done. <laughs> Just so we can see what this boat is like. That's the traffic behind me. That's the traffic to the side of me. And that's it going all the way around the back. As far as I can see, this boat is completely full. What we'll do, I'll just go around the corner. Remember, this ferry is disappearing in a few days. Yeah. Full. Absolutely full to the door. Completely full. Been well used. Okay. I'm back in the car. The big vehicles are all off the boat now, in the centre and they're just starting to empty the lanes of the cars that are under this overhang behind the poles I can see the cars around the corner just starting up, I'll stop the engine I'm just about to move in a wee There we go, that's me get the go ahead. Down the dual carriageway. Very simple really. Lots of space, two lanes of traffic here. Like I say all the, the high vehicles have gone already. And then this little nick here where you've just got one lane. And that's it, off the boat, very easy. No turning, no reversing. Don't have to maneuver into anything. Very simple. You crazy Carmack fools! <laughs> crazy! <laughs>